as bringers of good tidings and warners so that mankind will have no argument against Allah after the messengers and ever is Allah exalted in might and wise the children of Israel had been under horrible oppression from Pharaoh and you would think that getting away from that would solve all the problems. It sounds like it. You know, they were slaves. All they got to do is just get away. And once they're away, everything will be okay. Yeah? Let me give you a little background on it and let you see what happened. While they were still being oppressed, still slaves, there were certain ones amongst the children of Israel that were living pretty good. Even though they were living under the Egyptian rule, there were a few of the controllers of the children of Israel, huh? the oppression that people do to themselves is mostly worse than what other people do to them. Because inside of us, we have something that constantly making mistakes. And if we're not careful, it can get really bad. At the time of Pharaoh and Moses, you remember the story, how they're in this oppression all the time. They were slaves. But when they were released from slavery, you'd think everything's going to be all right. There's not going to be any problem. But their mentality, their thinking was messed up because since they were born, they always saw the same thing over and over and over. And that is false worship. Everybody was worshiping Pharaoh, saying he was the god. And people lied and people oppressed. And they were the ones being oppressed. And still, they were used to it, and that's what they knew. As a matter of fact, after they landed on the other side of the Red Sea, they were in Felix Arabia. They should have been happy, right? But they weren't. Some of them were complaining already. Now think about it. They saw the miracles that came while they were there in Egypt. They watched as the people of Pharaoh chased after them into the sea and were drowned. I mean, all the things that they just saw... They should be like, yay, but no. Some of them were saying, uh, now what are we going to do? What's this? We're over in the desert. We don't know what's going on, you know? Some of them asked Moses, okay, now what? And he's saying, well, I'm going to wait for my Lord to give me, you know, inspiration, what we'll do next. Like, you don't have a plan? You, you did what? You just took us out of Egypt into the water, and now we're over here, and there's a desert, and we don't have anything to eat. We don't know what, oh, man. This is lame. And they complained. Some of them complained really bad. They were even saying, Who is this? <laughs> did you appoint this guy? I don't remember asking this guy to take over. What are we doing over here? And some of them, maybe they said like, well, you know, maybe we should just go back and see if we can get our old job back. Oh, yeah? Duh. Couple of points here. Number one, you can't get through the Red Sea again, can you? And if you did go back, I'm sure they're going to be real happy after Pharaoh's dead now. They're going to blame us. Yeah, that's right. Mm, what are we going to do? So this was the mentality that these people had. Their thinking was really bad. It's called stinking thinking. <laughs> and may Allah save all of us from stinking thinking. Well, Moses was a true prophet, peace be upon him. And he was going by the inspiration of Allah. Allah was guiding him what to do with these people. Now, one of the things that they remembered and that should have been a good sign for them was the story of Korah. And some call him Karun from Arabic. In the Bible, he's called Korah. This guy, at this time of Moses, was highly intelligent. He was like, maybe like a scholar like that. He was very, very, very smart. And Allah blessed him with a lot of wealth. And he kept saying, it's because of my intelligence. That's why I have so much. He was very proud of it. And anybody didn't have anything, he'd say, you know why you're poor? Because you're stupid, that's why. If you're smart like me, you'd be rich too. And so many people looked at him. Same people, right? Like, wow. Boy, don't you wish you had treasure like this? I mean, he's got so much treasure. Just the keys. The keys to his treasure would be a load for a, a bunch of guys to carry his keys because he has so much. Yeah, I sure like to be like him. But then... 
Then look what Allah did to him. Allah made it so that in the middle of all his pride and his ha -ha, haughtiness, arrogance, <laughs> so Allah made the earth open up and <laughs> swallow him right down. All of his stuff went with him, all of his treasure, boom, down in the ground. Now, in one story I heard, I don't know if it's true, but it's funny. He said that it, he went all the way down, everything went down except his head. <laughs> his head was sticking up, which would be pretty funny because he thought his head as well. He got everything. <laughs> the most important part of it is, though, that now these same people who were saying, oh, I want to be like Korah. And they saw everything swallow up. They said, oh, I don't want to be like Korah. Karun is a loser, man. No, I don't be like him. See how fast they change? <laughs> so now they would come back to the children of Israel, and here they are. They're on this, uh, the bank. They're on the other side of the Red Sea. And they're worried what's going to happen next. Where are we going to go? What are we going to do? And who's got any food? Because they loaded up with a lot of treasure when they left. They took a lot of the Egyptians' gold and stuff when they cut out, okay? But who had any food? Oops. What are we going to eat? Man, who thought about that? Well, you can't drink out of the Red Sea, by the way, because it's salt water. <laughs> so you also need something to drink. And subhanAllah, you know what Allah would do? Allah was sending down from heaven manna. Manna is what you mentioned in the old text. And what it is actually is something very delicious, very nourishing, and the best part was it's free and it was everywhere. All they had to do is just eat it. Plus, Allah sent them quails. So they had quails, they had manna, Allah was providing them with drink, everything, whatever they needed. And it was even said that the manna was moist enough, you know, that it gave them that nourishment as well. But some of them said, eh, I'm getting tired of this, you know. Now back in Egypt, you know what we had over there? We had beans, we had lentils, we had garlic to give it a good flavor, and onions. Tell Moses what we want. So they go to Moses and they're saying, tell your Lord to send us down something else besides this junk. What we need, we need some beans, lentils, onions, garlic, you know, that kind of stuff. How about some cucumbers? Moses said to him, this, you would trade off something better or something which is less? This is the food of the people that oppressed you. You want to eat the beans and stuff that they used to give you, beans and garlic. That's, that's what you want? They said, yeah, that's what we want. We want to live like we used to live. Look at the mentality of the people. So Allah made dua for them. And Allah didn't give them any more of the manna and the quails. He gave them the beans and onions. <laughs> but anyhow, this is what happens when you grow up in a mentality. You just grow up in this thing and you just get used to it. Even it's bad, you're just used to it, so you just stay with it. And that's what they were doing. Even though they had left the place, even though they left the people, their brain was still right in the middle of it, just as though they were still right there in slavery. They were still enslaved to themselves. It gets worse. Yeah. So Moses ordered them, okay, now go in, attack the people that have taken our land, and get it back. Uh, you want us to fight? You mean like, fight, fight? Now remember, they weren't fighters. They're pyramid builders. They're building builders. They're slaves. They know how to sweep the floor. <laughs> but they didn't know how to fight. And they were going, uh-uh, we're not going to do that. It's said that there were thousands of the enemies, you know. But there were an awful lot of the children of Israel, too. But guess how many volunteered to fight? Out of all of the children of Israel, how many do you think stood up and said, I like to go fight? Two. Not 2,000, not 200. Two. That's it. They said, we'll go, we'll fight. <laughs> Everybody's going, oh, God, what losers, man. Two guys are going to beat everybody. Moses became very upset about this. He says, you've been ordered now to do something. This is a commandment of a law. Allah will give you victory. Now go in there and fight. Go. No, they wouldn't do it. They were still complaining about the desert, still complaining about not being back in slavery. They were still complaining. They're going, I'm not going to do that. I'll go down there and get killed. 
Of course, Moses had a lot of background in the desert because, you know, he spent those years there. It was 10 years, wasn't it? With the sheep and everything, and he knew a lot about it. And in fact, he was the best person to guide them around, no doubt about that. But because they refused to fight, Allah didn't give them back the plan. In fact, Allah ordered that they be commanded to stay out. Stay out wandering and wandering. No place to, to stay. Just keep moving until that whole generation dies, no matter how long it takes. And so they did. They traveled from place to place to place, never staying long enough to even put up a building. Just keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. And by the way, keep complaining, complaining, complaining. Complaining is not the sign of a good believer. All of us have this problem. You know, when things don't go right, we complain, oh, why you did that? How come this? How come that? Allah does not like that. Because whatever happens is from Allah. Anything that happens is from Allah. So when you complain, even though you're saying, well, he did it, or she did it, you're still complaining against Allah because nobody did anything except Allah let him do it. Is that right? So complaining is not liked by Allah. And we should all be careful about this subject. So Moses had a lot of background in the desert because, you know, he spent those years there. It was 10 years, wasn't it? With the sheep and everything. And he knew a lot about it. And in fact, he was the best person to guide them around, no doubt about that. But because they refused to fight, Allah didn't give them back the plan. In fact, Allah ordered that they be commanded to stay out. Stay out wandering and wandering, no place to, to stay. Just keep moving until that whole generation dies, no matter how long it takes. And so they did. They traveled from place to place to place, never staying long enough to even put up a building. Just keep moving. Keep moving, keep moving. And by the way, keep complaining, complaining, complaining. Complaining is not the sign of a good believer. All of us have this problem. You know, when things don't go right, we complain, oh, why you did that? How come this? How come that? Allah does not like that. Because whatever happens is from Allah. Anything that happens is from Allah. So when you complain, even though you're saying, well, he did it, or she did it, you're still complaining against the law because nobody did anything except Allah let them do it. Is that right? So complaining is not liked by Allah. And we should all be careful about this subject. Well, let's tell you what happened next. Moses was pretty upset with his people. That's true. And he was ready to just walk off and forget everything with these guys. And he was thinking, I want to complain to Allah, which is okay. You want to complain? Complain to Allah. And that's exactly what Musa alayhi salam did. He went back to the first place that he spoke to Allah. Anybody remember where that was? What was that? Mount Sinai. You remember? Anybody? Remember he was traveling? Yeah. And he saw, yes, yes. He saw that fire burning. And that's where he went back to this place. He went back, he went back. It's called Turisin, Mount Sinai. And he went there. And he told the people, he said, okay, guys, Settle down right here. Behave yourselves because I'm going up. I'm going up there where I spoke to God before. And I'm going to get some instruction from Allah. I will be gone 30 days. I'm going to be fasting 30 days. And then I'll be back with you, inshallah. Okay? They said, okay. And I'm leaving my brother. Harun, come here. And he brought Harun. He said, you're in charge. Take over while I'm gone. I'll be back. Inshallah, 30 days. Well, he went up. He was fasting, as you know, and he was going to talk with Allah. But he wants to fast first to get purified. Because talking to Allah, this is not something small. In fact, I don't think there's that many people can even imagine what it's like to have Allah talk to him direct. Although, by the way, Allah spoke to Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, direct. When Muhammad was up in the heaven in the Isra and Mirage, which we're going to hear about later. But he did. He spoke to Muhammad, too. Anyway, while he was fasting, Moses realized he had bad breath. It happens when you're fasting a lot, your breath starts smelling like, whoosh, whoa, what's that, you know? So he got to thinking. And on the last day, he said, you know, let me take some. Spoke to him. And he said, Moses, why did you break your fast? He said, well, I want to talk to you, but I wanted my breath to smell nice. He said, oh, Moses, didn't you know 
the smell of somebody's breath when they're fasting is more beloved to me than the smell of a rose. Now fast 10 more days to make up for this one. And so he did. Fasted 10 more days. Now guess what happened? Remember what he told the people? 30 days, right? So when 31 days came, right away they started going, where is he? He didn't come back. 32 days. Oh my God, what's going to happen now? 33 days. That's it. We're lost. We're in the desert. We're in, probably he's dead. Maybe an animal guy. I don't know what happened. No, oh my God. And they started again, complaining. big. And some guy named Samiri come along and he said, okay, guys, let me tell you what. I will show you what to do, okay? And he made up a big lie, a big lie. He told him something about uh, the angel Gabriel came on a horse or something like this and gave him some inspiration. And he started saying, do you remember the gods of the Egyptians? Yeah, think of those gods. We don't have any god. That's our problem. We're lost out here. Don't we need a god? They went, yeah. Now, remember, they grew up around those false gods. So it was natural for them to go, yeah, why not? Let's, let's get a god. He said, no, it has to be a special one. All right, everybody go get all the gold. Everybody got gold that you got out of Egypt. I want it. Bring it to me. Bring it to me. Everybody, I need it. Then they dug a big hole, a great big hole, put a fire in there. These people like holes and fires, don't they? <laughs> Remember the other stories? Big fire, boom, 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 and started melting the gold. Of course, this means he's got everybody's gold. <laughs> and he made it into what? Do you know? A golden calf. Huh? A golden calf. A golden calf. A golden calf. Yes. A golden calf. And he made it hollow. Yeah, it was kind of like, like a big tube, you know, like you could blow through it or something. And so he would turn it a certain way so the wind would blow through it. And it sounded like, <laughs> like this. And they were saying, wow, what's that? He said, see, see, ah, how's that for a god? And they were all excited. We got a god. And they started praying to it and bowing down to it and all the blah, everything, everything. Do you think Allah liked it? Hmm. Hmm. You don't even have to think about that one, do you? No, that's pretty clear. Well, you see what happened? Harun tried to stop him. He did. He tried to stop him. But as soon as he started talking, they let him know, hey, you get out of the line, you're dead meat because we're not going to tolerate it. We got us a God, and we got Samiri, and he's going to show us the way to go. You guys, you didn't do anything except get us in trouble. But this will get us out. This is what they thought. This is really, really bad. Now, in the meantime, okay, well, all of that's going on over here. Guess what? What's happening with Musa, alayhi salam, up on top of the mountain? Allah was speaking to him and giving him clear orders, or what we call commandments. Now, what's written in some of the historical books is pretty clear that it's what we know in Islam today. Also, what we have in the Quran in chapter 7, out of Raf, verse, I think like 143 in that area, tells us essentially these commandments similar. First commandment is La ilaha illallah. How did you know that? Because <laughs> it's always the first commandment, isn't it? There is no gods beside God. Don't have any other worship except for Allah. That was the first commandment for them. That's the first commandment for all the prophets. And certainly that's the first commandment for us today as Muslims. Well, the next one after that is about parents telling you how to take care of your parents. And that's definitely good. Be good, dutiful, honorable to your parents. Even Allah said in the Quran, when your parents get old and you're taking care of them, you know, like really, really old and stuff, don't even get upset. Don't say, oof, even to your parents. This is very bad. Allah won't like it if you complain. So take care of your parents. Also, Allah told them that don't kill your children. Now, you might say, kill your children? Who would do something stupid as that? It's strange today in my country that's happening a lot. People are killing their little babies when they're born. Somebody has a little baby, they don't want it, and they kill it and throw it in the garbage. It's been happening quite a bit lately, as a matter of fact. Yeah, that's really sad, isn't it? But well, some people, they're like on drugs and things like this, or they don't want the baby and their head's kind of messed up and they are doing these kind of things. really, really bad. It's actually, it's not just in my country. It's happening around the world. There's stories about this. But anyway, Allah is telling them, don't kill your children because you're afraid that they're going to eat your food. 
because a lot of people wear that. If you're real poor, you know, say, well, oh, no, we have another child. Oh, no, we'll never be able to feed it. What are we going to do? And some shaitan tells them, we'll kill the baby. So Allah was forbidding that because people used to do it. And Allah forbid, don't kill these babies. Then Allah goes on and tells them that they can't kill a baby, but anybody, don't kill anybody. Then it goes on and says, you have to deal with people fair. And give people a fair shape. Don't try to cheat people. You remember we talked about one of the prophets where his people were cheaters in all their business? Well, they say in here, don't cheat people. You have to be fair. Then Allah says, don't lie. In fact, you have to tell the truth, even if against yourself or somebody close to you. You, you are Muslim, you have to speak the truth always. So these are some of the things that were coming to Moses and a few other things as well, but the main thing was he was getting the commandments. He's coming down now from the mountain. He'd been up there 40 days or longer. And now when he comes down, what's the first thing he sees? A big golden calf and a bunch of people dancing around it, running around foolish and celebrating and doing crazy stuff. And he just like lost it. He said, that's it. That's it. He was really upset with them. In the historical books, it says that he threw the commandments down, broke them, had to go back up again. But what I have for you today is this, that we do know he took 70 of them, 70 of these men, and he said, go with me. We're going to go up right now to Allah. They said, we don't believe you. We believe in this is our God right here. And we don't want to believe you. He said, no, but I'm going to take you up and let you for yourself. See for yourself. They're going, we won't believe. Seventy of them, he took up the mountain, and they got up there, and they heard Allah speak to Moses. They heard it. And when Moses came back to him, they said, ah, we're not going to believe till we see Allah. Bring him so we can see him. Even they heard it. Now, Moses had already been through that himself, actually. He said to Allah, I would like to see you. And Allah told him, no, you can't see me. In fact, if I show myself, even to these mountains, watch what happens. All of a sudden, this mountains where it was just crumbled like that. And it scared Moses so bad he fell down and passed out. It was scary. And here are these stupid 70 people are saying, show us the law. And he's trying to tell them, guys, you couldn't take it. You would disintegrate. Ah, who cares? This is how bad they were. There's another story that talks about how Allah put a mountain down over them, you know, and that they were supposed to put their head down. Instead, they kept turning their head and looking up like this. That's another story. But the main thing is, well, what we do know is that they refuse to believe. And what happens, and this is why it's so important to understand, when you're young, you have a good chance to learn the right way of life. But when you get older, it's a lot harder because you have a lot of things in your head from all of your past when you grew up. Uh, today, we call it baggage, you know, stuff that's hanging on you from before. So what happened next? Yeah, the story gets a little bit worse. Yeah. Allah ordered that the ones who were the believers, now you have to go kill the ones who were worshiping this cat. And they did. They went and killed them. So that's pretty much what happened there. There was a few more things that happened. There was one really good man amongst people. Of Moses, he was good. 